NBA now requires to play the national anthem after the Dallas Mavericks halt ritual, specifically Mark Cuban, decided to stop playing the national anthem in the game. This is something that the NBA has been doing for a long time. The league announcement comes after the news that Dallas Mavs ceased mm-hmm. playing the national anthem prior to home games this season at the direction of owner Mark Cuban. The Mavs have not played the national anthem before any home games this season. A, a spokesperson told NBC the announcement from Bass seems to contradict the previous statement from NBA spokesperson Tim Frank, who told the NBC News that teams are permitted to run their pregame operations as they see fit. Uh, through league policy, NBA requires a stand for national anthem, according to the NBC Sports. NBC Commissioner Adam Silver hasn't strictly enforced the rule, allowing players to kneel during the anthem in the NBA bubble last season. So, uh, you know, Mark Cuban decides to not play the national anthem. I don't know if, uh, well, we watched the interview together yesterday mm-hmm. with uh, the girl from ESPN. I don't know her name, but she's always on. Rachel and Nichols. Rachel Nichols. And he said, look, it's not that I wasn't planning on doing it. We just didn't know if we were going to do it or not. We were just kind of listening to the audience. And some of them thought it wasn't a uh, uh, something that represented their community. They didn't want it to be played. Others wanted it to be played. So we just kind of saw what we're up, and now we're going to go back and playing it. So what are your thoughts about the National Anthem and Mark Cuban? I mean, let me just start off with Mark Cuban. I know you're listening. Play the damn National Anthem. I'll say it again. Play the damn National Anthem. We're here in America. The flip side to that is, you want to kneel? You want to do the Colin Kaepernick thing? Cool. But play the got national anthem. Tell me why. Tell me. We're why. here in freaking America. What, what are we mean, talking about? What do you mean by that? So what do you mean by that? We're in America. What's the big deal? I mean, are, are, <coughs> how, like, listen. Obviously, I'm, this is I'm, the I'm, argument yeah. that they're making. So I'm trying okay. to see what your argument. I mean, is. obviously, I'm. I you know, there's certain things I'm a little left on. Certain things I'm a little right on. Right. But where are we in the conversation where no more national anthem, no more Ameri- the Star Spangled Banner is a divisive topic. Okay, cool. If you want to, if you want to protest and kneel during the anthem, I'm good with that. I'm good with the Colin Kaepernick thing. Raise your voice. You know, social justice. I'm cool with that. But to the point of saying no national anthem, are you freaking kidding me? Do you know when the, like when did the national anthem like really started sports games? You did some research on uh, this. World War One. World War One, right? Okay, so World War Two. I'm assuming it. It was big. For me, being a kid, I remember, you know, I pledge allegiance at school, every, you know, 1991, the national anthem. Who sang it at the Super Bowl? You remember that? Whitney Houston completely crushed the national anthem. We were in the middle of Desert Storm, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. We were at a war, George W. Bush Sr., I'm George Bush Sr., H.W. Bush. She completely crushed the national anthem. From that day forward, I'm like, damn, like I... I get down with the national anthem. Now, if you again, if you want to protest, you have the right to protest. Peaceful protest. You totally have that right. You want to put your fist up. You want to kneel. I'm good with that. But in no, under no circumstance in America today should it be even a conversation of should we play the national anthem? Is the national anthem the right thing to do? If you don't want to be in America, get the, out, of, out of America. Paul, what do you think? Yeah, I actually 100% agree with Adam here. I was thinking the same thing. You, at the end of the day, you do have the freedom to leave. Like It's just like at a job. If you don't like certain things, it's one thing to complain about it. But at the end of the day, you still decide to be at that job. And you accept all the conditions that occur with it. If you don't like it, go find another place. You have that freedom. But you can't, you can't have your cake and eat it too. And like Adam said, the national anthem is... At the end, of the, that's kind of a that's you're being in America. You're accepting that even immigrants that come here, you're accepting the national anthem. That's yeah. part of the deal. Any any different opinion than what we've heard so far? Any different opinion, thoughts, Mario? Any different opinion than what he just said so far? I mean, I just give two cents here. Uh, I think it's interesting because none, no countries are perfect. I mean, obviously there's there's um, baggage that comes with everything. And to, to change things completely, like changing the national anthem and traditions. I know we talked about traditions yesterday of how changing, tra- like people adjust to traditions. Traditions traditionally don't change based on who's there. And you've talked about this culture in companies as well. Yeah. Of There's a set culture and then y- people don't change it. Either they adapt to it or like you guys have mentioned, they can leave. You know, uh, <clears throat> here, here, here's, what, here's what I would say with this. So what you, what you said, everybody, what you're saying here is, uh, nine years ago, I'm at uh, Malibu at this one private meeting that was taking place, and Prager was there. And Dennis Prager said, 
what makes religions work? Okay, and he's going through it. What makes people go to so? Why does Catholicism work and you know do so well? Why is the Judaism religion, you know, do, he's going through everything. He says because of what the word rituals, right? Rituals. There's certain rituals. Rituals. You know, uh, I'm a Christian, but I would go. I per, I prefer to pray in Catholic Church. I think I told you guys yeah. this. I like to pray in Catholic Church, even though I'm a Christian. Some people say you're out of your mind. Why do you want to do that? That's me. I prefer to pray. At, at a Catholic church, because to me, I feel a little bit more, uh, uh, it's different to me when I go there. When you go to a Catholic church, you know, you, there's so many rituals. Christians don't have that many rituals, if you think mm. about it. Non-denominational evangelical, not that many rituals. Judaism, lots of rituals. Lots of rituals. Christians <laughs> have rituals, don't get me wrong, but not at the level of. So, then you bring it back, and you say, okay, America. Mario, uh, when we came here, Mario was staying with us for the first uh, uh, couple days, uh, more like 20 days. But, you know, <laughs> he stayed with us here for the first couple weeks, and he's got a nice place now right here, beautiful place he's staying right next to Kipom. He loves uh, his new bed, by the way. Yeah, I bet he does. So so for, for about a week, Mario, what song did you hear me listen to for hours? Uh, Amazing Grace. How many times did you hear me listen to it? Honestly. On repeat, a couple hours every night. Every night, couple hours. No joke. That was your go-to song every oh, night. Oh, and even and, at dinner. and what happened every time I listen to it? You get emotional. You have no idea how emotional I get. Huh. Listen to that song. Amazing no, no, but there's a specific great. song. There's a Who? specific Which person. One? Which Anyways, one? there's a playlist. I listen to it, right? Okay. And, you know, it 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 kind of gets me to think about how lucky I am, incredible life I have, all the screw ups in life all the dumb stuff I've done, and I'm still forgiven, I still have the life that I have, and you've still been giving me the life that I'm living today? Are you, I'm the luckiest man alive, right? So, national anthem. What's the national anthem? Star Spangled Banner. You know, the, the greatest country in the world fought for this. People that came before us, they did what they did, and we have the ability to sit here, and we're gonna forget about that? Mm -hmm. And you don't wanna play just because you don't wanna play because people are offended? Okay. So he said the reason why we didn't want to do it is because certain people in our community didn't want to hear the national anthem. Certain in way. Dallas. Let me get this straight. In Dallas, Texas? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who did that poll? <laughs> who did that market research? Yeah. You know how sometimes my employees would come to me and you know, salespeople would come to me and say, a lot of people are not happy with this. Really? Name me one. Uh, 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 they said, really, give me how many people they are. And then it's always uh, uh, John and Bob. Oh, okay, so it's two people. So yeah. don't say they. Right. It's two people. How many agents do we have? 18,000. If two people say it, we mm -hmm. can't sit there for two people. You know. So, so you, you're living in Dallas. Most people in Dallas are what? Love America, mm -hmm. conservative, hardworking, entrepreneurs, business owners. Your ticket prices are not five bucks. If you are yeah. listening to a community that you said they don't want the national anthem to be played, what is the average income of that community? Let's do the numbers. Why don't you make your ticket uh, prices? Ticket holders, why don't you make saying. your ticket yeah. prices available to that community? Why don't you make yeah. your ticket prices ten bucks? Why, why do you have ticket prices so expensive? If it's so much about the community, stop selling hundred dollar tickets, two hundred dollar tickets, five hundred. If you're so mm -hmm. concerned about the community, but if somebody's buying a five hundred dollar ticket to come watch your game, two hundred dollar ticket to watch your game, for two I'm taking my kid, and I do that once a year, and you know twice a year. I'm making fifty thousand dollars, year, hundred thousand dollars, year, two hundred thousand dollars, year to buy a two hundred dollar sure. ticket. If not, by the way, I've never been to a basketball game in my life. I went to a basketball game as a kid one time, and the star of that game was Sedale Treat and Tony Smith. You probably Lakers. don't even Lakers. remember those names. Yeah, yeah number early, three, early early yeah. mid nineties. But the point is, Nick Van Axel. The point is, Nick Van Axel was a star that came a little yeah. bit after that. But but here's the point I'm trying to make to you. If you say your community doesn't want the national anthem to be played, show us the report. What percentage of your community doesn't want to play it? Because let's just say that number is 10%. Yeah. Say that number is 20%. Mm -hmm. I can find 50 other things that 10 or 20% of people are offended by you do. What are you going to do? Change again? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So every single time a small minority community comes out and says, well, we're going to have change every single time? I'm part of the minority. I'm Middle Eastern. How many Middle Easterns are in America? I'm a Syrian. I'm part of the minority community. I, I don't have a four-year degree. I don't have a two-year degree. I am a minority I came to the States, green card, got my citizenship a day after I was in the military. What are you going to do? Everything I complain about, you're going to say, oh, my gosh, Patrick's upset? No. Mm -hmm. you, I have to work my way up, have a voice, get my – okay. So I don't know. Look, uh, there's, there's two different types of people. You know, people compare him and Trump together on, you know, Mark Cuban and Trump and all this other stuff. By the way, yesterday you asked me a question. Said, if Cuban ever ran, would you vote for him? What I tell you? 
Ten times who he runs against. against. And, and who, I gave you the roster. Who did I? What did I say? When I you said, "What if you ran against Bernie?" You said, uh, Cuban. "Cuban." If you ran against Biden, you'd say, "Cuban." Cuban, Cuban. all if, day. If you ran against Trump, you said, "I don't know what you said." No, you didn't Trump. ask Trump. You said, "You you Pence. said Ted you Cruz." Said you Pence. said Pence. Oh, Ted Cruz is where you kind of were. I said I would be a little bit yeah. uh, in the middle because yeah. Cuban at least understands business, but the difference is the following. What concerns me, he's obviously another future candidate that wants to be yeah. a business. It's a yeah. movement right now of entrepreneurs becoming president. You respect Cuban. Oh, but there's you, things you don't wh- how do you not agree res- with. How do you not respect the guy? Okay. First of all, how do you not respect the guy? You go to Indiana University. The guy's a ridiculous numbers guy, mm-hmm. an incredible sales guy, learns to use his numbers and sales together, becomes a billionaire, buys the Mavs, brings the first championship. Like... There is no, I don't respect the guy. Mm-hmm. I disagree with his assessment of this situation. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. It's not, there is no, I don't respect the guy for what he's done in his life. He's created a lot of jobs. He's brought a lot of you know, different things that he's done. But yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just think uh, we have to, this whole cancel culture, if it changes the rituals and what America stands for, we're, we're going to lose yeah. our values and principles. Then America is no longer America. No. Because it, it, America is just a land. What is America founded on? If it is, let's just kind of keep reminding ourselves that this is what America's on. Sometimes we need, and you know what affirmation is? Affirmation is what? Hearing the same thing, what? Over and over and over again. I had an affirmation list with 30 uh, affirmations. People would come to my house. Friends of mine would come to my house. They'd be sitting in this place. or They'd take the affirmation. They'd go to the bathroom. They'd say, Pat, you got all these laminated stuff on the wall. They would read it. They're like, man, I'm fired up because I had these affirmations. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you some of the affirmations till today. We have to listen to National Anthem. It's an affirmation. Yeah. It's an affirmation. It's who we that are. It's who we are, and we listen to it over and over and over and over. My favorite service of the year is Christmas. You go to Christmas, you hear this story. At the end, Dudley would put up the candles. He had one at the front. All of us would walk up. We would light up our small candle. Then we'd go in our community. Then we'd light up whoever's around us, 5, 10, 15 people. And all of a sudden, you got 5,000 people with candles. They would turn off the lights. He would say, hold it like this. Don't let the candle drop on the floor, et cetera, et cetera. And you would look at it like, this is awesome. Every year you would go to your life, so freaking amazing. A ritual. It's a ritual. It's a reminder. One person can light up a country and mm-hmm. inspire them. So I don't know if this is a good thing he's doing himself. I'm glad the, the NBA took their position, by the way. Phenomenal job. Shout out kudos to, to the Silver NBA. Yeah, like, kudos nah, to the NBA for this, taking buddy. that position. So it, it, it seems to, to just use the Cuban Trump analogy. And this is one of the things that always frustrated me of Trump. And it, this is what Cuban's doing right now. It's the people are saying they people they're saying they, yeah. people are saying y- yeah. and 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 I got to give credit. I don't remember the interview that uh, Jonathan Swan, the I think he's British, uh, not British, uh, New Zealand or Australian reporter. The he sat down and did the one on one. He says, "Who sang? Tell me who sang." Yeah. Get, tell tell me who sang. What people are saying. It's so like I love what you said, and it who's was with they? You. who's they? Well, yeah. Bob and John. Okay, so two people are saying. So that's what Cuba, people are saying. Yeah, but by the who way, who did the research we, on that? We all do yeah. it. W- when do we use that? When we're cornered. Yeah. When yeah. You're, when you're well, I cover. heard. Yeah, but but we all. I do, heard. We all do that. Saying, but when we do that, hear, when we do that, yeah. we can still be held accountable. Yeah. Also, and if you have an argument, guess what? Then you say, "Here's who said it." Okay, yeah. fair. I didn't know. Yeah. Then let's talk about it, right? Mm-hmm. But if you say they people in our community are not happy, what percentage of your people in your community who is upset about yeah. the national anthem? According it's to such an yeah. easy way to BS your way yeah. out of a I'm topic. Not a fan oh, of that. People are saying also, also the way in the interview how he put it of oh we did we didn't decide we're kind of just seeing how it goes but now we'll go back to it. See, it was see very that. safe answer of yeah. like of not trying to play that's or take a stance. That's why he could be a president yeah. one day. But, but diplomatic. I think I think also yesterday on the interview with Adam and Robert, uh, Robert was mentioning that a lot of people don't have financial education. Mm-hmm. At the same time, I think a lot of people don't know the meaning of the United States flag, of the or, the, or what we have done. I mean, I come from Colombia originally, so for me being here, every time, even that I'm not a, 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 a an American U.S. citizen born here. I always stand up and give my respect to the flag just because all the great things that I have gotten for coming to America. So I just think that a lot of U.S. citizens in high school, I went to high school here in the United States, college, they don't teach us the value of what United States of America, of America means. Yeah, it's, and, and this is a guy that, yeah, you, just, you know, he, he fought to come here from, at what age did you come here from, uh, 14 years old? 14. 14 years old. You got your bachelor's degree? Yes. On your own dime, mm-hmm. who paid for it? 
I was working 40, 60 hours a week while going to school. How, how old were you when you got the bachelor's in those two? Hey, I finished at 21. And how, many, how much family you had here while you were in... in, in I have no family here no in the family. United States. I mean, that's, that's the story. That's Chris Hunter, but this is the question. Stephen Quinonios, Francis Scott Key, who wrote the anthem, was a slave owner, and most people didn't know that last that to last five years. So what's so that's what drives people crazy and want to change the America, the beautiful soy boy mafia hashtag. <laughs> so your community. Yeah. Let, let me give the answer to that. My perspective. Just so you know, Assyrians were slave owners, blacks were slave owners, Jews were slave owners. You go back. 200 years ago, 300 years ago, every culture owned As, slaves. Yeah. Every culture owned slaves. There is not one that never owned slaves. Africa owned slaves. They do many small, re- till today, there are many countries that own slaves. What are we going to do? So now we have to get rid of all the history of everybody that at one point had it. Is that what we're going to be doing? So, so what if right now somebody said uh, this one large insurance company that's one of our competitors and they've been around since 1868. Okay, it's based out of New York, hence. You, okay, so did you know that back in the days they sold life insurance to slave owners? So one of my guys said, we should use that when we're going up against our competitors and bring that up. I said, you're never going to do that. Why? Because if they did it, other people did it. Exactly. That was legal back then. It was stupid. It was not good. It wasn't anything that we agree with today. But back then, it was what? Legal. legal. Okay? Very simple. Legal. And if it was legal back then, no one is breaking what? The law. law. Okay? Very simple. So does it mean we endorse it? Of course not. Does it mean we support it? Absolutely not. Does it mean we sit there and we say, oh, my gosh, you know, it's, it's, it's who cares? No, that's not what we're saying. It wasn't a law back then. So large insurance companies... Uh, uh, what do you call it? They sold insurance to slave owners. Should we shut all of them down? All the banks mm-hmm. here, all the banks in America, every single one of them, Bank of America, Bank of Italy, used to be Bank of Italy. So every single one of the banks in America finance and help open up accounts for slave owners. Should we shut down all the banks? Should, should, should we shut down all the banks? That's what we should do. So every book you ever read that's an old book, okay, we're talking about 200 years ago, that are classics. Oh, Somebody in their family, should we get rid of that book? So is this the direction we're going to go? So, so a crime everybody committed, now we should bring it back, and because of that, embarrassed in public? Is that the direction we're going? Again, that is a form of a nuclear war. Because if you constantly go and say, but you did this 79 years ago, but you did this 200 years ago. Look at what happened Kevin Hart. Who didn't want to see Kevin Hart do the Oscars? Who didn't want to see him as the host? Everybody wanted to see him do the, be the host. But no, back in 2014, here's what Kevin Hart tweeted. Are you kidding me? And then they went through what they did with Kevin Hart? No. Mm-hmm. So I, I, to me, it is part of the tradition. It's what we've used. Everybody and anybody that we know, on their resume, there is something bad, including yourself, Kenyon. I bet you if I were to go and do hire somebody $50,000 and I told them your project is to go investigate to see what bad things you did, I guarantee we would bring out some things that you wouldn't be happy with. I mean, we're human. We're not perfect. That's the point. None of us are perfect. We make mistakes. That's yeah. just the way it is. What's that one song? I'm only human, born to make oh, mistakes. Yeah. To make it's one of the best commercials, mistakes. by the way. Go ahead. Uh, and I think another thing there is kind of you're judging the past with today's perspective and today's uh, values and principles that we have or our viewpoints right now, which just doesn't make sense because mm-hmm. times change. Things that are okay in the past aren't okay now and vice versa. Things that are okay now aren't weren't okay then. So you're just... You're, you're confusing the times and how you look at things. And in that case, there's going to be wrong things with everything. I mean, again, we're human. We're not perfect. We make mistakes. Mm-hmm. And at different points in time, those things are okay or those things are normal. Watch this. I can't hear my – okay, thank you. So what is February? Black History Month. Black History Month. Yeah. Right? Okay. America, do you know what percentage of Americans are African are African American? 13%. Exactly. Good number. That's yeah. the number. 13.4%. percent mm-hmm. Do you know what percentage of our company are African American out probably, of our eighteen thousand? Thirty percent, maybe twenty twenty-two percent. Hmm. Get t- between twenty to twenty-two percent. Fifty percent Latino. Fifty percent Latino. Twenty yeah. to twenty percent African American. Right? Okay. Twenty percent white. Where are we at? You guys are up there, but okay. you're like top five. No, no, no not, not you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's top five. But he, here, here's the point I'm trying to make to you. Does this mean that we don't have 
you know, 50% of the company to be white that we're racist against. Like, you understand what I'm saying? Like, what are you going to do every time? You're racist against somebody. Every comp, you know, yeah. like, but this son, this month is Black History Month. So the teacher asks my son, uh, which character do you want to write a report about for Black History Month at the school that he's going to? So him and my wife are having a conversation together. And my son says, because my son has read a lot of books on Martin Luther King. Any book I get mm. that I can give on Martin Tico. Luther King, I want you, yeah, Tico. I want him to read it. So he says, I want to write about Martin Luther King. Jen says, why don't you try somebody else? Because everybody else is doing Martin Luther King. He says, okay. He comes back. He says, you know what, Mom? I want to do it on Rosa Parks. He said this yesterday. Mm. He said, okay, son. So he's doing his report on Rosa Parks. How's he, how does he know about Rosa Parks? He's read multiple books on Rosa Parks. Why? Because we want to teach him the history of America. Mm -hmm. We don't sit there and say, don't read this. Don't read this. You know, read this. Here's what happened. The this good and what, the bad. Dude, I went and seen the real bus of Rosa Parks. That was, I went to the bus where it, it was in Dearborn. It's in Ford Museum. Eric and I drove as we were driving here, and yeah. he gave me a lot of crap for this, was because we were driving through Alabama, and I saw we were about to pass Montgomery, and then Selma was further south. So I was like, let's just drive through Selma and the uh, Pete something bridge where they the famous bridge where they marched over it we drove over it and kind of just checked out the area so absolutely there's there's a lot you can learn and there's a lot you can you have to kind of know of it to not re repeat the mistakes what's the quote those who don't read history repeat history yep mm -hmm. adam i think even just what we're doing right now you're giving your perspective you're giving your perspective i'm giving my perspective we all have different per perspectives it's important I'm not saying you're 100% right, you're 100% wrong. It's important to talk things out. One thing that stands out to me, even on the podcast, I remember when we were during the middle of all the protests, George Floyd, they were going down and removing a lot of the Confederate statues, ruining them all. And you asked me a question, should the Confederate statues be removed? And I, listen, no fan of Confederacy whatsoever, like not even close. Um, and I give a very emotional response. And I, I, hell yeah, take them down. Get the hell out of here. And people are like, well, what do you mean take them down? I'm like, get them out. Get, fuck them. Da, 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 da. And then after cooler heads prevailed, I listened to some other perspectives. I rethought my perspective. I reanalyzed my stance of this. I said, you know what? They should go in a museum for history. If you want to learn, there's a Confederate museum over there. We can't cancel the past. We can learn from it. If you're not, if you don't learn from history, you're destined to repeat it. So I remember on, a, on another podcast, I gave uh, a, um, a reform my answer. And I said, well, you know, I thought about it and I'd like to reverse course. And, I, you know, I don't think they should just remove everything, but I don't think it should be out there in the public to be grandstanded on. Like these are these people weren't heroes. At the end of the day, they were traitors, but it is part of our history. So put it in a museum. You know, if you want to learn about it, go for it. So. What's important is to have a conversation, to hear your thoughts, to hear my thoughts, to hear the BLM social justice thoughts, to hear why, you know, the, the South will rise again, hear their perspective, talk it out. I did an interview with Daryl Davis. The most important thing you can do is respect somebody's opinion and be willing to listen. You might disagree, but hear them out. And when you can talk to somebody and you can have an open dialogue, that's where you'll find some compromise in the middle. The cancel culture, up, oh, get out, you're out, go, up. Oh, but that's go, where that. we are, though. That's where we are. It's though. a very dangerous slippery slope. Unfortunately, that's where we are. So yeah. what I, I told Robert Kiyosaki, I said, we are living in the walking on, walking on eggshell society. So if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.